Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, work session uh, of the Board of Commissioners of Haverford Township. It is Monday, May 1st, 2023, a little bit after 7. Uh, Mr. Berman, would you call the roll? Mr. Gondek. Present. Mr. Forsty Grupp. Here. Mr. McCluskey. Here. Mr. Cavender. Here. Mr. Quinn. Here. Commissioner Hart. Here. Commissioner Wexler. Here. Commissioner Trombetta. Here. Commissioner Holmes. Here. Uh, Chief? Tonight is our regularly scheduled uh, work session. At these sessions, we uh, often invite folks who have special reports to give to us. Um, tonight before us is Christopher Herr, a certified public accountant and partner at Mailey LLP. He will be providing to us some information about the results of our 2022 audited financial statements. Mr. Herr, welcome. Thank you for your service to the township, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Appreciate it. Happy to be here. Uh, the uh, 22 financial statement results. Um, really, no bad news here. It's all pretty straightforward. I did issue a uh, four page summary of the 100 plus page financial statement. I figured we Sorry. <laughs> Just to jump right in, um, this first page summary of the findings and results. Um, so this is a summary of our, our audit opinion. Um, so when we come in, we do the audit, we look at all the documentation, we do compile the financial statement, but we do consider the financial statement to be the township's document. The one thing here that's ours is the opinion on the financial statement. Um, on the financial statement audit, it is an unmodified opinion. What that means is, in our opinion, statements are free of any material misstatement. They comply with GAAP. That's all generally accepted accounting principles. They comply with all GASB pronouncements. That's the Governmental Accounting Standards Board that um, is continuing to make uh, new requirements that keep making this statement bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, no scope limitations. We received everything that we needed uh, in order to conduct the audit. We come in with a very lengthy list of documents that we want to see, everything from bank statements and reconciliations to every employee's W-2 to individual invoices and, and just about anything else that you can think of related to the, the finances we're making requests of. And we did receive everything that we needed uh, to get uh, in order to conduct the audit. No instances of non-compliance um, during the audit, no findings, um, no significant deficiencies, no material weaknesses. Um, some of the places I look at to come up with potential findings, we do look at internal controls. Um, these are the policies and procedures over you know, cash disbursements. How are we processing checks, cash receipts, payroll, bank reconciliation processes? How are we making journal entries? Um, we go through all that. Um, we look at, you know, what they, uh, what the business office provides us as policies and procedures. We test them against what's actually happening. And if anywhere we find that what's actually happening doesn't match those policies or procedures, or, you know, there's a shortfall, there's a weakness or something that could be improved, um, you know, those will be noted in the audit as a significant deficiency or material weakness. We didn't have any of those. I think the controls here are in really good shape. Another indicator on that is journal entries. How many adjustments do we have to make to the books when we come in to conduct the audit? I think we had four audit adjustments here. Um, one was related to a new GASB, GASB 87. Um, and another entry was related to uh, a GASB for pension adjustments. Those are things that we typically make in any municipality we go into. So what that tells me is you guys are getting really good numbers. Um, on a month-to-month -month basis, when you're getting financial reports from the business office, they're in really good shape because we could not find any issues there. And believe me, we kicked a lot of stones, and uh, we thought the numbers were in really, really great shape. Um, the uniform guidance audit. So there's the financial statement audit, which is an audit of the books as you usually see them, your general fund, your capital project funds, things of that nature. And then there's a uniform guidance audit. It's also known as a single audit or a yellow book audit. This is an audit that we are required to perform over federal programs. So this is an audit of your federal money. Um, auditor's report, again, it's an unmodified, clean opinion. That's what you want to have. 
um, no significant deficiencies or material weaknesses. You really have two main sources of federal money here. You have your uh, CDBG grant, your community development block grant, and we have the new ARPA money coming through. So this was the first year that you guys really had ARPA funding uh, spent here. So that was the program we chose. Um, There's about $2 million in spending there. Uh, we did look at that. It looks like it's being spent the way ARPA funds are supposed to be spent, the way it's intended by the Department of Treasury. Um, so no issues there. And in the future, um, you know, usually there's some rotation when you're doing a federal program in, in a, you know, typical uh, environment, we'd be going back to CDBG funding next year to look at that. Um, the way this ARPA funding is set up because the federal government really wants to look at that. This is noted by um, federal government as being higher risk. So we will be looking at those ARPA funds every year that we here's your auditor and you're spending those funds. So that is an every year uh, uh, rotation there. You are a low risk auditee. All that means is that you haven't had any findings. Um, you've had a single audit done over each of the last three years and you've had no findings in any of those years. So again, that's a, you know, a, a good mark to have being a low risk auditee. And findings question costs none. Again, you guys seem to be spending that money the way you should be. Couple financial points I wanted to point out. Um, counting estimates, I do like to go over some of the bigger estimates in the financial statement. Your net pension liability, so for your pension plans, this is taking the assets that are held in trust, less the actuarially calculated liability. So for your police plan, last year you had a net liability of 12 million. That went up to 23 million this year, so that liability increased. The reason for that, uh, you had an $8.9 million loss on investments in your police pension plan. It's about 15.6%. I saw it every municipality I work on. Every pension plan that, that I've seen had, you know, roughly the 13 to 18% uh, loss on investments in, in 22. You guys are right in the middle of that. So that is exactly what I would have expected to see, unfortunately, this year. Now, I do want to put a little asterisk on that. You guys did have double-digit gains the last three years. So not all doom and gloom. It was a bad year, but you are coming off a, a series of really good years uh, historically. Non-uniform pension plans, same thing happened here. Went from a $5 million liability to uh, $14.5 million. Um, $16.7 million loss on investments there was 16%, right on the nose. The total OPEB liability, um, now this is an unfunded plan. You do not have funds in trust for the OPEB monies. You're not required to have funds uh, in a trust for OPEB uh, the way you are with pensions. Uh, the liability actually decreased from 56 million down to 48 million. Uh, the reason for that is the actuary had a series of changes in his, uh, his assumptions that he does as part of his valuation. He changed uh, mortality rates, the healthcare rate projections went down, uh, and there was also a discount rate and interest rate change there. So all those things combined caused about an $8 million drop in your OPEP liability. And then capital assets, uh, we do estimate depreciation on sure. your assets. Yep. All right. Just remind me what the acronym OPEP means. Other post-employment benefits. So this is post-employment benefits other than pension, so primarily health care. Got it. Sorry. I'm, I'm too used to the acronyms. <laughs> so the last thing there, capital assets, you do estimate your depreciation based on uh, cost and estimated lives of assets. So your governmental activities, this is everything but sewer. Total cost of assets uh, in the township, about $125 million. Accumulated depreciation on that is $50 million. So when I look at that as a ratio, you're about 40% of the way through the life of your assets, which is really good. That's, that's a really nice low number. Usually I'm seeing 50s really? and 60s. The sewer assets. I, uh, can, I, can I ask yeah. a little more about that? So the governmental activities, so other than sewer, so this is... Um, it's going to be all your buildings, your infrastructure, uh, roads, um, curbs, things like that, all your vehicles, police vehicles, um, all your equipment. It's, it's everything. So I, I assume there's, um, so you're used to seeing things more like 60% and this is closer to 40. Yeah. Uh, a lot of that's going to be, you know, you have a nice newer building here. Um, a lot of municipalities I'll, I'll go to, uh, you know, those, those buildings are sometimes 40, 50 years old, sometimes older. 
So obviously I'm sorry we never got to host you in the Quatrani <laughs> building. It was a real treat. <laughs> I'm sure that had greater depreciation than it actually had value. Um, but uh, thanks. All right, go yeah. ahead. Sorry. No, no problem. And the sewer assets, um, total cost there is just shy of $8 million. Accumulated depreciation is about 2.4. So about 30% of the life through, through the life of the assets there. Again, good ratio. Just a little bit of uh, some revenue and expense highlights. This first table is the major revenues of the township. Uh, taxes, uh, year on year, extremely flat, 32 million a year. Um, real estate taxes, about 26.5 million of that. Transfer taxes uh, went from 2.6 million down to 2.2. So that went down about 400,000 uh, going from 21 to 22. It was offset because the BBT tax went up about 300,000. So overall, really flat on the real estate taxes. Intergovernmental revenues uh, up a couple million, went from about 4.5 million to 6.5. This is usually largely your pension aid, um, liquid fuels, the highway aid money that you get from the state. Um, the $2 million increase is going to be that ARPA money I talked about before, that new ARPA money. You spent about $2 million of it, so that got recognized as revenue. That's going to cause that jump there. Charges for services went from $7.4 million last year. It's up about $1.5 million to $8.9 million this year. Two big things I saw there. Uh, recreation revenue is up uh, about $300,000, went from about $1.4 to $1.7 million. Um, I'm seeing that, again, in a lot of my municipalities coming out of COVID, the recreation activities seem to be gaining back steam. Uh, the other thing, police special detail uh, went from 400000 up to about a million dollars. So that's reimbursement for, you know, uh, uses of your police department here. Big things there I saw was the Marion Golf Club and uh, Aqua had a road prog program here that uh, uh, they reimbursed you for use of your, your staff. So. That was most of the gain in, in charges for services. And sewer is uh, flat, $4.8 million a year, just perfectly even. I ask you a question about uh, charges. Um, yep. <clears throat> uh, is our recreation department, are we at pre-COVID levels yet in terms of revenue? Uh, yes, we're actually a little higher than we were in 2019. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, actually, just to follow up on that question, is that um, – in terms of the kind of the breakdown of a fee, like the actual fee charge versus the usage, is it because the, have the fees stayed relatively the same, it's just more people are using it or? I would say it's a combination of both, Commissioner. Um, the fees went up a little bit and the participation went up a little bit. So it's both more people participating and a little bit more on the cost side. So we, we, you say the participation is at, pre, at or above pre-COVID levels? Last year was above pre-COVID levels. Thank you. Down in the uh, expenditure section, uh, public safety, obviously your biggest cost center. Um, really looked good, 21 to 20. Um, or I'm sorry, 22 to 21. Forgive me. I'm doing, I'm all over with years back at the office. So 22 to 21. So 21, 20.9 20 million up to 21.5 million for 22. It's an increase of about 650,000. It's really only about a 3% increase. Um, usually when I'm looking at police departments in larger municipalities like this, I'm expected to see anywhere from 5 to 10% when you figure in, you know, salary increases, healthcare trends, um, you know, things of that nature. So a 3% increase looks really good to me. I didn't see anything, you know, individually significant to spike. And if you figure in that you, your police special detail charges for services that we just talked about went up 600,000, that reimbursement almost completely offsets your increase in public safety. So that's a, you know really uh, stable cost center, Very seems to be very well controlled. Public works, this is your highway street and sanitation. A little bit of increase here, went from about 9.9 .9 million uh, last year up to 12.2 million this year. It's about a $2.3 million increase. Some of that's gonna be that new ARPA fund spending that's you know gonna end up uh, in that bucket that you haven't had in prior years. Um, sanitation expenses was also up, um, recycling, landfill costs. I saw about half a million dollars more of expense in 22 versus 21. Park and Rec, um, similar to the revenues, the expenses have also increased. Uh, went from 5.5 million up to about 6 million, so about 11% increase. But again, we're seeing that increase in revenues as well, so that, that makes sense um, from an analytic standpoint. And then finally, uh, sewer um, increased 3.3 million of expense up to 4 million. 
Um, there was, uh, you know, a little bit of your typical personnel uh, cost increases, but the big thing there, sewage disposal costs were up about a half a million dollars. Just a couple graphs on the last page. Um, bonds payable. I always like to put this in just so you know where you're at with the debt. Um, so at the end of 21, you had about $45.7 million of debt, about $43.7 million of debt at the end of 22. So came down about $2 million just due to scheduled principal payments uh, during the year. And that last graph might be the most important one. This is your fund balance. So if there's any sort of graph in here that points to financial health, it would be this one. So your fund balance is what you'd have. If you took all your assets, you paid off all your liabilities, this would be what's left. So the blue line at the very top, that's your general fund. Um, you can see a little bit of a slow and steady increase there. At the end of 20, it was about 25.7 million, went up to 28.8. Ultimately, it's about $33.4 million this year. Um, one of the things I always do is I compare that to your annual expenses. So if I take $33.4 million of fund balance, Compared to your expenses for the year of about 45 million, it's about a 73% ratio. It means if you had no money coming in, you'd be able to, you know, pay the bills for about nine months. Pretty good percentage. Um, I looked at some of my other clients, um, bigger, smaller than you. Um, it's, I have one or two that are in the 50, 60 range that I saw, but I, I have one that's at zero, that's in a little bit of trouble, you know, but um, it's a really healthy fund balance in the general fund. The gray line, that's your sewer fund, 14.4 up to 15.4, and then ultimately 16.1 million. So again, some slow and steady growth there. Um, Four million dollars of expense in there this year. So you know what you have in fund balance equates to about 400 percent of your annual expenses. So that's high, but it's also a sewer fund. And typically, I do see municipalities have higher sort of money set aside there for, you know, all of a sudden something goes wrong, a few million dollars can disappear real quick. And then the orange line at the bottom, this is your other governmental funds. It's mostly going to be capital projects and your ARPA funds. Uh, 6.3 million down to 4.2, down to 3.2 million. Um, I usually will see that line kind of go up and down. You know, you go, you borrow money for capital projects, it's going to go up, you spend it, it goes down. Um, so nothing unusual there. I do want to just point out that is ARPA in there. And the reason it's not um, uh, 20 million, uh, because that's how much cash you have for ARPA or a little less than that. The way that works on your balance sheet is it's actually an asset and offsetting liability until you spend it. That's when you recognize it as revenue and it goes into fund balance. So I just wanted to point that out. You didn't run, you didn't lose all your ARPA money. It didn't disappear on you. It's there. It just doesn't impact fund balance. That's really all I had on the financial statement side. Um, again, it was a really good audit. It was our first year um, back here. We, we did this audit six years ago. I wasn't the partner on it at the time, but um, you know, coming back in, the books are uh, in, in great shape. Um, you know, hats off to the business office, had everything in, in really good order for us. Appreciated all their efforts, uh, pulling everything together. And you know, we were out for a, a pretty busy week and um, they, they, they stuck it out for us, got us done. So really appreciate that. Um, I, I'd be happy to feel any questions if there are any. Um, <clears throat> you certainly answered my questions, Mr. Herr, during your presentation. Uh, but do any of my colleagues have anything to uh, add or share or request or clarify? Mr. Herr, thank you for an excellent presentation and uh, very good visual aids. And um, Thank you for your continued work for the township. I appreciate it. If anything would happen to come up, you know, you're reviewing the reports at another time, the question comes up, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. We will take advantage of that offer. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Take care. Okay. The next uh, item on our agenda is commissioner committee updates. I invite my colleagues, um, anybody who um, runs a committee or just wants to report on one to um, speak now. Mr. President. Uh, yes. Commissioner Forsty Krupp. I would like to highlight a couple of the programs that our Haverford Township Free Library is offering this month. Um, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and they have several programs that are specifically targeted to help people think about ways for self-care and challenging stigma. 
So for example, there's a self-care bingo from May 1st to Wednesday, May 31st for tweens, teens, and adults. And to celebrate mental health awareness, they are playing self-care bingo all month. You can pick up a bingo card at the youth services desk or the reference desk. If you complete the whole card, you can be entered to win a, uh, a raffle for a basket of prizes to help you relax and take care of yourself. Also, next Tuesday on May 9th at 6.30, the um, Haverford Township Free Library is sponsoring a program made possible through a partnership between the library and be part of the conversation and the Haverford Alliance for Drug Awareness called Challenging Stigma, Helping Friends and Families Understand Addiction. This program takes place next Tuesday, May 9th at 6.30 in the community room. Friends, family, and community members are invited to this interactive conversation where they will be joined by a treatment professional and an individual in recovery. Registration is required for this program. You can certainly find it on the library website, and you can also register by going to www.convo.zone slash Averford. Um, the other thing that they're doing, and this is specifically for um, teens, on Mondays, each Monday of May, they're going to have teen yoga. Um, so you can go and experience how yoga and meditation can help decrease stress, anxiety, and create calmness and improve your mood. It is led by a registered yoga instructor. Mats are provided, just wear appropriate attire. So the library's got lots of great programs and I'm, I hope people will take advantage of them. Thank you, Mr. Forstie Grubb. And uh, while we don't typically use a, um, our work session to herald things like this, it was important to note some that were happening early in May. We didn't want to wait till next week. Um, and have folks uh, miss an opportunity or schedule uh, conflicting events. So thank you. Does any other uh, commissioner have anything to add from a committee? President, I'd like yes. to thank Mr. Berman, the consultant that we retained as a township to study our emergency management, fire, and EMS services, uh, has completed their report. Uh, the committee, uh, Mr. Berman will have a briefing. The consultant will brief the Bureau of Fire on Thursday evening at 7 p.m., just to verify, and then at the conclusion of that briefing, they'll get their copies of the entire report. So I'd like to thank uh, the staff for all the work and all the fire companies that did that. So it's been a lot of months and uh, a lot of people waiting for it, but so Thursday evening, they'll, they'll all the fire chiefs will have a briefing on it and they'll have the written copy of their report at the end of that briefing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Wexler. Um, uh, is there any other commissioner with anything else? To update? Uh, we will now invite the chief to come forward. Provide the um, chief's update. Uh, the chief's report for April 2023, uh, 14 criminal arrests, three juvenile arrests, 141 traffic citations, 13 non-traffics, 163 written warnings and 553 uh, parking tickets were issued. Um, we have a bit of a crisis when it comes to traffic citations. It seems that Delaware County has never ordered any new traffic citations that all the police departments in Delaware County have run out of traffic citations. Um, we had issues. Uh, one of the chiefs uh, spearheaded the uh, conversation to uh, get the uh, get the order. We found out that they, they come uh, from uh, overseas. Um, back and forth with the county, and he finally found a manager uh, that realized they were never ordered. So uh, an emergency order was issued, and I understand that uh, they'll be here uh, any day now. I'm sure that'll make a lot of motorists happy that the uh, traffic citations are in short supply. Can we uh, can we cut this part of the presentation? <laughs> fact. I, it's I, a fact. Chief, I really wish maybe you whispered that to us. No, I just would like to tell you what's going on. Uh, but we are moving in the direction of automated traffic citations in our police cars. Uh, with the accreditation, uh, we're able to move forward with that. We have two test uh, printers in vehicles now, and we're working with that. There are uh, two other police departments in the county are up and running with a few police cars. So the days are written uh, traffic citations 
citations are starting to go away. It'll expedite a road stop. An officer can swipe the, tri the uh, driver's license through the uh, uh, swipe, and it'll go into the scanner. It'll uh, uh, load into the uh, areas that are needed, and it'll print it, and that will be handed to the operator. So with uh, technology, we're moving forward also. Uh, with that, of course, comes an expense, so, but uh, we budgeted for that. So um, we always have to make sure everybody knows that. So I'm embarrassed to say we had multiple vehicles entered in one particular neighborhood that I'm not happy about, which I won't go into too much detail. Uh, 600 block of Ashurst, 800 block of Myrtle. Um, we had seven vehicles entered in that same area, Ashurst, uh, Myrtle, Grove Place, um, Two vehicles were taken from that same area. Uh, one was recovered in uh, northeast Philadelphia. Uh, we had a vehicle recovered, stolen last night in the Pilgrim Gardens area, which isn't in this report because it's in May. Um, turns out it, it was being chased by uh, Philadelphia police down City Avenue. Two vehicles crashed uh, at Presidential Boulevard. The occupants took off. So. Um, 17 catalytic converter thefts, uh, mostly in the area of Pilgrim Gardens and the uh, Penfield section. Um, anybody who's watching a YouTube video or Instagram uh, or any other video that people post uh, from their own personal cameras, they will see that it takes about three minutes to get a catalytic converter off a car. I'll pull up next to it, throw a small jack, jack it up a, a few inches off the ground, slide underneath it, and the catalytic co converter is gone that quickly. Uh, as far as the... Th Oh, Chief, right. they're still concentrating on certain models of cars, or they just get all Volkswagens, every one of them. Everything's a Volkswagen. Every one of them, yes. Yeah. Nothing else but in this past uh, spring. So, like I had said before, I don't know what's in those uh, that makes, makes them so valuable. I don't know. Um, you know, it's in there all those Delco citations that you. What's that again, sir? All those Delco citations. Yes, that's blanks. correct. Yes. That's what's in there. I should have never said that. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> um, just going to bring it up every time. This <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> Um, it's, it's very concerning with what's going on. We, we target certain areas uh, through uh, different types of patrol. They seem to move somewhere else. Uh, it's, it's not just Haverford Township. It's all along the main line. Springfield got hit the other night also. Marple, Radnor, we're all going through the same issues. Uh, I'm sorry to say we haven't made a, any big arrest on the Catholic conversions. There's been a few, but they hit and run so quickly. Uh, used to be uh, you'd see them during the day. Uh, they go to a shopping center, um, somebody would see them, and then they uh, would make a phone call. But now it's, it's happening at nighttime. So I, I expect at some point one of our local police departments or us will make a big arrest. But the problem is once we arrest, as same with the cars entered, um, the next group comes in and does the same thing. Chief, um, are, these, uh, are these taking place for the most part in the street, or are they also going into driveways? Mostly in the street, but there are some in the driveways also. Uh, the, one of the uh, incidents we had, um, three on a block of Walnut Place. Uh, this was at um, 244, 25 in the morning. She heard a noise outside, uh, and she saw a small uh, sedan um, taking off northbound the Walnut Place. So they, they did not get into or take anything out of her car. I think she scared them off uh, when she turned the light on. Um, we have video uh, on Ashurst Road. A vehicle pulls up. Seven males get out of one car, and they go right down the street, uh, trying every door handle as they go down. It's it's it, it's just walk right through, hit hit hit. Uh, as soon as they find a door open, uh, they grab what they can grab, look for the keys, and then uh, the keys from the car. The car is gone uh, that quickly. So uh, it's it's troubling, uh, but with our new program. Uh, when we can start registering these cameras, we'll have a lot better results instead of knocking on doors at 4 o'clock in the morning uh, to look at, the, at cameras. So uh, we are moving forward with that. We hope to have that running in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so um, that's where we're at. So Chief, we've... Chief, the car thieves? Go ahead. Brian. Uh, I was just going to ask, with, with the cattle converters, I mean, once they're, they're stolen, where are they going? Do you, I mean, do you have any understanding of that? Um, Volkswagen dealers. I would assume. Well, I'm sorry. What'd you say? <laughs> they're going to Volkswagen dealers, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> they're getting ground up, and made into citations. I mean, are are you so. aware of any of any state efforts? I mean, obviously, you know, being the, the local police force, you're bearing the brunt of dealing with the 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 actual initial theft. But I guess my question is, are you aware of any state efforts to try to address where they're going yeah. and collectively I, I, go I, I, after I, the end the end user? No, I'm not aware of that. Uh, the, the, the police departments obviously all speak amongst themselves as far as information, but we have no information of where they actually go. 
Uh, I don't know that Philadelphia suffers from this as we do, um, but our detectors are working on it, making contacts throughout the region. But uh, so far, nobody has come up with an actual place of where these uh, converters are ending up. I assume that unscrupulous uh, junkyard is where they're going. So, you know, anybody who's buying that sort of stuff knows they're stolen. But you know how that business works. Thank you. Commissioner, you got a question? Uh, no, I don't think so. Chief, is there anything residents can do to protect? Lock oh. your car. <laughs> now, I've been saying that for well, three wait. or four years. There's one step before that, right? Take your keys, keys out, out of, of your the car, car. and that... then lock your car. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to make light of this. I mean, we we laugh about it a little bit because it, it almost becomes comical sometimes uh, when you watch these actions happen. But it's serious. Uh, my concern is, is somebody going to walk out of the house and confront somebody accidentally? Yeah. Uh, who's carrying guns? Who's carrying knives? I mean, you see the violence uh, in our region uh, and uh, people uh, who are uh, uh, doing crimes aren't hesitant to use a weapon on someone that's that's what i don't want to see happen so but chief as modern cars get harder and harder to steal without the key the answer i, I mean i guess the obvious answer to my question is how are we having so many car thefts the answer is that the people are keys are in the, keys car, in the yes. car they'll leave their keys in on the car yeah, even, even though you have to start start they start the car they still leave it in in there that little so that's the first thing they do when they open the car they look look in the in the uh, uh cup holders or in the console to see if keys are there and the car is going in a matter of seconds it really is uh so this was a group of kids that pulled up onto that street and just all hopped out at late late, yes. late at night and ch checked every car that they could and went right down the street mm -hmm. my house included yeah except i locked my car so that was the night you didn't yes, leave yes. your keys in the car yes. chief um well i appreciate that and it's very important for you to remind everybody not only don't leave your keys in the uh, car. I can't it's, believe I have to say it loud. Yes, it's incredibly, it's Im incredibly lock. important that people have to realize, you know, uh, the days of leaving doors unlocked and cars unlocked are long gone. Uh, crime is in our region. It's not going to go away anytime soon. It's just a world we live in, um, sadly. Uh, we have to take our own measures to keep ourselves safe. And I, I, I highly recommend people getting ring cameras, any other kind of camera for around their house. Uh, they're relatively cheap. They're easy to install. Uh, and believe me, it's it's a big help for us. We con as you can see, we constantly uh, post pictures that we have uh, with get with, and we get good results from it. Uh, so we share from other departments who who give us pictures that a crime may have happened here. They recovered something. So we all all share the same information. So it it is important. Please please lock your card. And commissioners, when you put your information out to your constituents, just please remind them of that. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Uh, Chief, one quick question, just yes. to kind of go back on an, an older topic. Uh, have uh, the issues or citizens voicing their, their complaints about the, the new meter system? Yes. That seems to have smoothed over. I know there were some tweaks made. Are you we aware of any other issues? We have, uh, you would hear more complaints than we would. Uh, we get a few, uh, but very few people are coming in now uh, with issues. And, and, and one, as I said last time, when they do, uh, we, we work through and try to help them out. I get a lot every day, but I think we all know why I get, yeah, I get a lot. You, of you are in, you, you have the Brookline lot there and Brookline Boulevard. Yeah, a lot that's of where everybody, yeah, right. or a complains to me about, about that, so. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> um, we now move to um, next week's, uh, the items we expect to do next week. Um, first on our agendas are uh, various ordinances we will be passing or considering. Uh, then resolutions, then contract awards. Um, our first ordinance that we will consider next week is Ordinance P4, which is the second reading of the 2023 bond issue. Um, we certainly uh, have received and analyzed a great deal of information about the 2023 bond issue um, at several previous meetings, including the last meeting where we uh, passed um, uh, where we passed the ordinance for the first time. Um, do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments about the 2023 bond issue? Just a general question, maybe, Amy. Um, if we don't go ahead with one of these projects, that money, what happens to that money? So we have more projects approved than we have money to borrow. So uh, projects can be substituted. Plus, federal law allows you to substitute projects if projects don't work out, subject to certain restrictions, but not very restrictive restrictions. Um, so 
Um, but the first thing you do is you cook into the um, into the project list uh, enough um, enough cushion um, that if something is less than you think it is, or you get rid of a project entirely, um, you um, you still have room to borrow. I mean, obviously, the bulk of this bond issue is for the library, and there's a serious commitment on the part of this board throughout the last year to to undertake that project. Um, so something going dramatically wrong with that would would require us to get you know analysis and 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 advice as to what to do with those bond proceeds um but uh we don't expect that to be a problem amy anything i got wrong there no i was just going to add the board can always if you if you really wanted to to make a, a 90 degree turn from one of the intended projects you could do another uh, ordinance to an amendment ordinance Um, so, um, the next, uh, our ordinance P5, we will be considering next week, a second reading of the Responsible Contractors Ordinance. This is an ordinance we passed last month. Um, this was uh, originally um, offered and uh, uh, moved, and then uh, there was uh, an amendment to that, um, setting a minimum floor for the um, uh, requirements of the Responsible Contractor Ordinance to take place on purchases over, sorry, on projects that... Uh, exceeded $250,000 of cost um, that passed uh, with the board. Does anybody have any questions or comments um, tonight before we consider it next week? Um, hearing none, we will also have two traffic uh, ordinances. One will be a second reading, ordinance P6, and the second will be a first reading. Um, will be P7. I don't uh, have the details on P7, but I trust whatever commissioner's board it is associated with. Yes, Ms. Cavender, uh, uh, Commissioner Cavender. I'll ask the chief, is that Panmure going one way? That's uh, Panmure, right. So we, we had looked at Panmure when we made the one uh, parking on one side, we eliminated the no parking zone there to alleviate the parking uh, concerns in the neighborhood. So there's probably about 40 to 60 cars that park along there. But as we evaluated, uh, we realized that there were some issues as far as room going back and forth. So the decision was to, and that was part of what we had, we're going to do anyway. We wanted to <coughs> see what it looked like first to make it one way uh, coming from Buck towards railroad. So uh, that, that will go into effect, but that will simmer down that up. School's gonna be out in another uh, couple of weeks and then uh, we'll get those signs up and, and that posted. Do you summer. think, uh, are people going to feel that impact at all with traffic flow who live in the neighborhood? I wouldn't think so. Yeah, we, think we, we've been watching this and we, we, we did another uh, traffic count up there showing, and I don't have it with me tonight, but showing which way most of the vehicles <laughs> were traveling and, and the, the, the highest number were coming from Buck Lane okay. uh, toward, towards railroad. So we felt that was the same thing. There's only... I think three houses on on um, Pamir, and they belong to the school. So we'll we'll monitor this. Obviously, you know we we've been uh, talking about this parking issue up here for uh, quite some time now. We're just trying to help uh, alleviate some of the neighbors' concerns. But when you do one thing, it ends up uh, causing maybe an issue somewhere else. That's why we're constantly monitoring it for you. Thank you. It sounds it sounds like a good solution. And that was P7, is that right? That's the first reading of the ordinance. Um, okay, the next, um, uh, we now move to resolutions. Um, resolution 2308 of 2023, which is uh, for our finance department, uh, approval of the new depository for township funds with the Pennsylvania School District Liquid Asset Fund uh, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, Amy, would you like to give us a quick... Uh, um, sure. This is, an, a, this is going to be a new depository for some idle funds. Uh, we use a similar product called Pennsylvania Local Government Insurance Trust, which is a pooled trust for local governments to invest their monies, fully collateralized and all that good stuff. This is a similar vehicle uh, for school districts that's also open to government. So um, this goes by the acronym PSLADF. Um, so again, just another safe vehicle to invest idle funds until we need them. But our main depository will remain citizens. Um, that's what it is. Uh, that's what we do our daily banking on. We also use Univest, we use WISFIS, and we use Franklin Mint Federal Credit Union. Do we have, um, is there anything that we're going to uh, target for um, uh, PSD LAF or just it's just an extra 
asset for us? I try our next trip deposit. Actually, our investment policy encourages us not to have more than 50% of our funds in any one of those banks. So we're getting a little heavy over at Pliget, so I wanted to open up another account with something equally safe, but move some money out of there. It's getting similar returns. Perfect. What kind of returns is this getting? About five-ish. And the, this depository, is this a, 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 like a highly liquid asset or? Yes, yes. Any other questions or comments from my colleagues? Uh, the next resolution we will consider, um, 2309 of 2023. This is, uh, this is the resolution we pass as a consequence of holding the Tax Equity and Financial Responsibility Act hearing, known as the TEFRA hearing, that we held um, uh, last month. Um, and uh, it is in our packet. Uh, we show the publication and we describe that we have approved the bond, that we've held a hearing that we approve the bond issue. Uh, any questions or comments on that? Um, the next resolution we will consider, 2310 of 2023, is a grant agreement uh, with the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency. Um, you may correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we will be using this grant in order to purchase the, um, to participate in the product that we heard about last month from the uh, chief, is this the InfoShare Law Enforcement Records Management System? That, that's correct. We're changing software providers for the vehicles, which that's how our full reporting system uh, with this new uh, CSI system uh, in conjunction with the district attorney's office, we'll be able to share information uh, for court cases instead of having to send separate emails. So okay. it's a countywide project. Uh, we put in for a grant. The DA's office is going to fund some of the police departments up front to help them get started on it, but we uh, have the grant to pay for it, and it looks like I think it's uh, to pay for it for three years. So it's it's very helpful, and that way we can get moving on it and ho hopefully have it operating by September. Okay. Now this is um, yeah, I guess that was my confusion. This is not the project, though the, the contract we were talking about in terms of the. Um, it's, this the is just the grant interaction itself. between civilians and the PD department in terms of um, right, coordinating. There'll be, some, there'll be a separate uh, contract for the CSI software. Um, okay, and then finally, uh, we will be considering resolution number 2311 of 2023. And this is a resolution supporting a package of anti-hate crime bills that are currently um, before uh, Pennsylvania's General Assembly. Um, would anyone like to comment on that? Mr. President. Uh, yes, Commissioner Trombetta. I'm pleased to join Commissioner Gondek in introducing this resolution that calls upon our Pennsylvania state legislators to pass a package of four House bills, their House bills uh, 1024, 1025, 1026, and 1027, each of which are working to address very shortcomings in Pennsylvania's laws to combat hate crimes. More specifically, these bills work to expand protections for individuals who identify as LGBTQIA+. They strengthen civil and criminal penalties, increase training for police and educators, and encourage reporting of hate-based incidents. House Bill 1026 requires hate crime offenders to compete, complete excuse me, diversity classes and allows for community impact statements to be submitted prior to sentencing. Um, the introduction of this package of legislative bills by Representative Stan Frankel and Napoleon Nelson last week coincided with the beginning of the Pittsburgh Tree of Life synagogue trial for the gunman who took 11 innocent lives for no other reason that they were, than that they were practicing their faith. Um, if that's not reason enough to push for legislative action, Numerous reports indicate that there's a rising tide in hate and extremist actions against Jews and other minority populations. In fact, the Anti-Defamation League reports that Pennsylvania alone saw a 65% increase in anti-Semitic incidents last year. These troubling reports highlight the importance of collective action to combat these crimes, and it begins on the local level. By passing this resolution, we are empowering our state legislators to pass these bills but perhaps more importantly, we're stating that hate is not welcome in our Commonwealth, nor in our community of Haverford Township. 
I really want to thank Commissioner Gondek again for joining me in the introduction of this important resolution. I'm asking the other commissioners to join us tonight and next Monday in support. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Gambetta. Any questions or comments from uh, any other commissioners? I would just like to briefly comment since this is the, the work session on this particular uh, th this particular piece. First, I'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Trombetta for her hard work um, in terms of putting together a lot of the language uh, and materials for this. But I, I, I you know, I join with uh, Tr Commissioner Trebetta on this because I do feel very strongly with regards to these uh, bills. Uh, upon you know, prior to you know learning of these bills, I mean, while I myself am Catholic, I was uh, my mother's side of the family is Jewish, um, and I grew up in a neighborhood in Haverford Township, actually in uh, over. Uh, Oops, sorry. I grew up in a neighborhood in uh, Hafford Township where a, a sizable number of my neighbors and my friends were of the Jewish faith. And so anti-Semitism has always been kind of uh, something that's, that's been on my radar. Uh, and I guess over the years as I've grown, it's, it's kind of morphed into a personal uh, disdain for the fact that there are people in our community and, and here in Hafford Township in our schools and our, our neighborhoods that have to worry about suffering from violence and other crimes and harm simply because of the characteristics of themselves, such as their race, their religion, uh, their gender. Uh, and, and so it, it's, it's an issue that has some, uh, you know, personal importance to myself. And, and when I read these bills, I think that these bills are, are very uh, important to help advance addressing some of these issues. I mean, there's the, the first bill obviously expands uh, the language and the coverage for, you know, what constitutes the protected class for a hate crime, and I'm supportive of, of adding those characteristics. Uh, but also, you know, I, I've always been a big believer that in order to better address an issue, you have to be able to identify the issue, you have to know it exists, and the contours of that issue. And I think that this bill goes or these bills, this set of bills, goes a long way towards, uh, you know, ensuring that our law enforcement uh, agencies uh, receive the appropriate training to be able to properly identify these uh, these instances of hate crime uh, and then better track them. Uh, you know, one of the components of this uh, bill actually specifically addresses the Safe to Save program, uh, which has been integrated with our school systems um, in order to ensure that our children uh, that are in the school systems have, have uh, the ability to go to school and, and be safe from these kinds of activities. Um, and the fourth bill actually goes as far as to require for anyone who's convicted of these particular heinous crimes um, a requirement of their parole or probation education. Um, I, I truly believe in my heart that while some people are, it just it is what it is, some people are just born evil, I think that the majority of people who um, commit these kinds of infractions or hold these kinds of beliefs uh, were led that direction. Um, and they were typically probably led that direction based on misinformation and, and flat out lies. And I think that uh, by being able to introduce an educational component to try to combat some of this misinformation, some of these lies, um, it will help kind of right the ship for some of these people who otherwise uh, just need to kind of be pushed onto the, the right path. Um, so in, in all of those regards, I, I do voice strong uh, support for these resolutions and I hope that uh, all of my fellow commissioners will join uh, in voting for this uh, next week. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gondok. Thank you, Commissioner Trombetta. Any, uh, any other questions or comments? Um, my only regret about next week's meeting is that I won't be here, but uh, I'll choose tonight to say that I support your efforts, both of you. and. Um, and uh, were I here next week, I would be casting a, a yes vote for this resolution and would be proudly joining it. And I certainly encourage my colleagues to do this. Um, uh, if there's nothing else on the topic, I will move on to contract awards and purchases. Um, first, uh, for consideration for public works, we will be doing a, a fuel oil contract award as well as the Raymond Drive Basin. Mr. Berman, do you want to tell us about those? Sure. The uh, the fuel oil is the contract for fuel uh, for the vehicles and for oil as well, uh, for heating oil. Um, Bill, 
I think you have something to update on it or no? Um, I, I believe we, the township a couple weeks ago had some computer difficulties. So the bid, the bids coming in were delayed or some vendors weren't able to do that. So I think the director of public works would like to uh, withdraw the bids. Uh, actually, we'll cancel, the, we'll cancel them out or what the appropriate term is and then rebid the project for the fuel so that we get enough vendors to comply so that we'll throw out the existing bids uh, because of the technical difficulties we had. We didn't, we didn't receive as many as we would have gotten had we not had the technical issues with our uh, mail servers and some other things a couple weeks ago. So I think that's the update I received from the Director of Public Works this afternoon. Uh, do we need to uh, take action next week to withdraw those bids or is it enough to take it off the agenda? I guess you can change the agenda, I guess, right? You don't need to take action to remove. I mean, you do need to take action to amend the agenda. If it's already on the agenda for the for the work session. So, but you could take that action right now. Right. So it's on the agenda for the work session, but we haven't published an agenda for the next week's meeting yet. So that would mean, can't we just Publish take, 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 take I, it off now and not? So I think it's motion just, to remove it from the agenda for next week. I, I don't next. think we can formally act tonight. This is a work. I suggest that we remove it. Doesn't yeah. Doesn't and I suggest yeah. that that's an excellent idea. And I think it won't appear <laughs> next it week's agenda. <laughs> It doesn't need to be on there. The, 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 that agenda has not been published yet. So yes. To amend that agenda. It's the will of uh, the commissioners to not have it on it. It is our expectation that there will not be a successful awarding of a bid next week for fuel oil because uh, there are technical difficulties with it. So therefore, yeah. I'm alerting everyone. It will not be can re we can reject all bids. Right. And that's that's what we can do. If yeah. And I think I don't think we as a board need to reject them. I think our township officials are authorized to reject all bids and rebid. Is that correct? If, if, that if, if it if it was done prior to the coming before this board, it could be done uh, through the staff. Line. Excellent. Well, it hasn't come before the board yet. It will not be on next week's agenda. We'll look forward to new bids um, when they take place. Um, Raymond Drive Basin. The basin along Raymond Drive and Glendale Road is by Genthrick Field, and it's an existing basin that is somewhat overgrown, and we're going to do a project to naturalize that basin, and it will assist us in improving the uh, water quality and runoff over there with our MS4 requirements. Dave, if you want to provide a little bit more detail on that. Sure. And uh, most important for the agenda, that has been extended for another month, receipt of bids. So we would not be receiving those bids to be awarded next week. Providing a little bit more information to the contractors before we have receive those bids. That's done by us, by addendum, by township, you know, by the township. So that just comes off the agenda. Yep. We'll put it on next week. There will be no bids. There will be no schedule award of that. Thank you. But, but uh, Mr. Berman's no, correct. That's an existing basin built in the 70s. When Summer Westgate Hills was built and Raymond Drive was built, the basin was dedicated to the township. It's become overgrown. Uh, so first thing that's going to happen is they're going to go in to remove all the trees. Secondly, it's kind of a, it's kind of an interesting project with the MS4 program that we talk about every year. And I make a report on part of the goal there is to remove pollutants from the waterways of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The, when this project is done, it'll be reconditioned basin. So it will be removed. Plant, native plantings will be installed and the basin will, will besides managing stormwater management, will remove pollutants at a measurable amount prior to discharge to Darby Creek. Uh, it's, it's all part of what we talked about before with our MS4 program for, for pollution, or PRP, pollution reduction. This is an open water basin? Is this like yes, a lake? Absolutely. There's only a couple we own in the township. This is the biggest one we have. Uh, most of the ones that, that, that are in the township, well, I shouldn't say that. There's four of them up at Hartford Reserve, too. But they're well, they're, they're 2010 basins. We have, this is the oldest, oldest large basin at the Hartford Township Bones. What's its capacity? Ooh, about about 10,000 cubic feet, maybe a little bit more. It's about a half an acre, maybe, maybe a hair more. Um, a lot of mature trees in there. We actually thought about doing a project in two phases, take the trees out and then recondition it. There's going to be a lot of activity, so we're doing it all at once. That's the biggest thing, and I'm glad, uh, actually, it's probably good we brought it up tonight, because once this job starts, people will see a lot of, residents will see a lot of mature trees coming down. 
at the uh, behind the baseball softball field on Gunther Field. So if you're standing on the uh, first baseline, looking out to right field, that's where the work will be done. Right field and center field. There'll still be a buffer to the field, but in there you'll see it. You'll see it from the trail too. Is the basin surrounded by a fence? Is it otherwise protected? Uh, you know, we took, good question. We thought about that. The, the depth of the water will only go about to 18 inches. Oh, okay. All right. So you say a half uh, acre. There's a lot of water in there. Right. We're not talking about, a, a, you know, a couple, you know, we're not talking about a no, foot no, acre. No. Yeah. We're not creating a wet pond. The water will go up about 18 inches, depending on how, how hard the rain is. Water will continue to drain, but then about 12 inches will be held and actually stored and perked into the ground and and absorbed by the vegetation. That's a big part of the job. We, we're doing what's called a big soil exchange, where we're taking 18 inches of soil out, reconditioning that soil, and putting it back in. That's so the water will perk in within 24 hours. Because we don't want standing water. Right. right? Standing water would, would not be working properly. So standing water brings its own problems. So uh, the intent is to drain that in 24 to 36 hours. And Dave, why do the trees need to be removed? Um, we can't can't do the soil exchange if you don't dig the trees out. Trees shouldn't be there, first off. It's a basin. The basin's not intended to have uh, trees in it. It's uh, back in the 70s, ideally, they, they just never should have been allowed to grow. Um, so the basin won't function properly without the trees there, and the soil condition is impossible. You cannot recondition the soils without taking the trees out. And the trees, while they bring, they, have, they do have some advantages. And don't forget the whole area is ringed by nice mature trees. They won't, they won't do the pollution reduction. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you for that explanation. Uh, does anybody else have any questions or comments on the Raymond Drive Basin? I'm hearing none. Next, uh, for our consideration next week will be um, the Haverford Township Free Library um, entering into an owner's representative contract. Um, any questions or comments on that? Do we have um, previous experience with <coughs> the representative for our The uh, owner's representative is uh, Ken Matthews, it's a uh, CB development, and he has done a, an extensive amount of work with the school district, and also he's been working with the library for quite a few uh, years now. Um, we have a copy of the contract in our package, is that correct? The copy of the contract in the package is the um, existing contract that they've been working under with the library, and... Um, Speaking with the township solicitor, that contract would be assigned and there would be some modification um, to the terms for insurance and things of that nature to accommodate the township's requirements. So at this point, we are reviewing the, um, oh, here we are. And then we have the agreement. Oh, that's the library. And, and um, do we have a draft agreement between us and CBD? This is what would take that place. We would be assigned this agreement that's in your your packet, which is the same as what was assigned with the library. Okay. So we're just taking it over. With some changes to the insurance language to satisfy our insurance requirements. Are those changes highlighted in here somewhere or they're just? The, not the insurance, the, those are still to be determined to be okay. made. Um, but obviously they'd be for all of the, the township's advantage. Um, Do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments about this? Uh, I do. So correct me if I'm wrong, this would be the next step in terms of the library actually being able to put their plan out to bid, correct? For us to actually start to get some structure to that aspect? This is the uh, owner's representative or in, in some terminology, the construction manager that would be managing the project um, from here to completion. And they would be, instead of working for the library, they would be working directly for the, well, not directly, as a consultant to the township. Are they the ones who put the project at the bid, though, to actually get the bids in? Or They'll be assisting with that process, but the design team, the architect, and the sub-consultants under the architectural team would be the ones Handled. that would administer the bid process for us. Okay. Thank you. 
technically the bid process is going to be ours. We're doing, the township is doing the bid process. These folks are assisting, but this is a township project. Uh, that is correct. They'll just be administering the process for us. Yes. Um, and these are professional services, so this can be, uh, correct. Um, any other questions or comments? Um, hearing none, we will consider that next week. Um, also, Parks and Recreation will be. Um, oh, we skipped the. Sorry. Purchase. Oh, yes, a paramedical ve uh, paramedic vehicle for our chief of paramedics. Is that right? Um, any questions or comments about that? Yes. Um, we're country is moving rapidly towards electric vehicles. Did we give consideration to an electric vehicle here? Um, we explored that at all? We we have explored. Um, there are um, so this would be a quick response vehicle. It wouldn't be a, a, a medic unit with capacity to carry a patient. It would be a quick response vehicle for the chief. There um, there are not many that are available at the moment. I think that we're on the very cusp of having some that will be available in the near future. Um, it's something that we have to plan for both from a facility perspective to make sure that we have the appropriate amount of charging here out in the parking lot, but also from a, um, we want to make sure that the vehicles are available and that they're uh, in use. Um, I do think that they're going to be very, very soon. Is there an urgency to purchase the, I mean, we, maybe we should consider, uh, you know, I'm just, we need to do this right now. If there potential for an electric vehicle to be available in the next year or so. The, um, let me do a little bit of research on that and we'll see what we can do um, to update the board next week. The, the vehicle that we're replacing is a 2014. And so it is appropriate that we'd, we would have that on the replacement schedule at this time. But perhaps there's something that I can look at with the chief and come up with something more for the board next week. Okay, appreciate that. Any other questions or comments on this uh, purchase? Um, moving on, for Parks and Recreation, there'll be the purchase of playground equipment at Grange Park. Brian? Uh, yes, we're uh, putting in a, a fairly large piece that's replacing a piece that's in there that had some uh, maintenance issues that we couldn't repair. So we're gonna replace a piece and then there's a couple smaller pieces a small climbing structure and two little circular cozy types of things that spin around. So yeah, it's like four pieces. Cozy cocoon, I think. Cocoon, exactly. Oh. Cozy cocoon. Some alliteration. All right. And a rock climbing wall, is that correct? Yeah, it's a bit again, it's about this high, so it's a small climbing structure for little guys. At the base of the rock climbing wall, do we use like uh, wood chips or rubber surface or something? Yes. Yeah, so it's wood chips. Wood, we use wood chips. Yeah. We, well, called uh, carpeting, wood carpeting. Wood carpeting. Yeah. So it's, it's engineered. Wait, there's some Orwellian newspeak. Yeah. yeah. Engineered wood chips. So they're not just wood chips. They actually pound them down so that they're, they take impact and reduce impact on falls. Great. Excellent. Um, any other questions from anybody on uh, playground equipment, the cozy cocoons, <laughs> the engineered wood chips, or the little rock climbing wall at the Grange? Um, hearing none. Um, next week, uh, we will have an opportunity to um, witness and participate in um, our police department's um, annual awards. Um, that is a practice that we have gotten into um, post COVID to do this, um, uh, to herald the accomplishments um, of our uh, brave officers of the police department. Um, Chief has asked and uh, we as a board are happy to uh, host uh, these awards at uh, our, our May meeting. And um, we look forward to seeing you and seeing members of the force. Thank you. Commissioner, if I could add a couple more things to that, if I have a moment. Um, you may. 
Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, we are hosting the Police Unity Tour here next week. It's the uh, fundraiser that goes to Washington for the fallen officers. Uh, they, they ride uh, their bikes from starting up in uh, another area, come down, and they ride right through Washington. Uh, because of the loss of Sergeant Kevin Reddy next year, they feel it appropriate to have a stop here and do a small ceremony, take a break. Uh, we'll have the, they're supplying lunch for their uh, people. We expect about 100, 110 people here on, uh, on May the 9th, I think it is. At, uh, Tuesday, the 9th? Yeah, during the day, yes. They'll be in and out because uh, they have to keep moving to keep their schedule. But it, uh, it was, uh, it, they felt appropriate. I think it's very nice that they are honoring uh, Sergeant Redding by stopping here and have a small ceremony. And then later on that week in Washington, uh, his name will be placed on the memorial in Washington, D.C. with the other fallen officers uh, throughout the, uh, the country. So, uh, it's, a, it's an appropriate, uh, solemn time for uh, him and his family. Chief, thank you for telling us that, and um, uh, we uh, perhaps maybe you come here to the um, to the mic and just repeat, or, or I'll say it right now. So Tuesday the ninth, what time, Chief? He said it into a mic. Yeah, it's just he'll be on camera here. Yeah. Chief, in particular, I was asking you about uh, the uh, the event, uh, the bike ride that will stop here on May the ninth, Tuesday, uh, yes, in it, honor yes. of. Sergeant, Sergeant Kevin Redding. Redding, yes, to follow Sergeant Kevin Redding. It's a police unity tour where the officers volunteer their time to support the officers as a fundraising uh, for the memorials uh, in Washington, D.C. So uh, they felt it appropriate to make a stop here during the tour uh, and have a small ceremony in honor of Sergeant Redding, uh, have a chance for them to rest, have lunch, and then move on to, uh, uh, to the ride to the next stop as they move through. So it's, and then later on that, that following weekend, uh, when they arrive in Washington, there's a ceremony. On Saturday night, there's a candlelight service uh, for all the officers who have died in the line of duty in the past year. His name will be placed on the memorial. It's a very solemn and, and honorable, uh, uh, a fitting ceremony for him and, and his family. It's very, very, uh, very appropriate, and, and it's a very moving ceremony down there. A lot of people there for that. Chief, is there a way for members of the public on Tuesday the 9th to play any part in, in what happens? Um, I, I would say... I, Probably not because we, we expect to have a very large crowd here uh, and it's, it's, it's going to be tight for space. It's just basically a, a rest stop for them and a small ceremony outside. Uh, and I'm not sure of all the details yet. I'm still, I'm still getting them in. Uh, I'll know in the next few days. So if there's anything that the public would like to attend, I'll find out if there, what kind of ceremony we're going to have here. So If we know the cyclist route, if there's anybody who wants to or you know a time they'll be leaving here. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll find out more details. So, okay. uh, but like that, we expect them to get here around 11 a.m. That's that's the target okay. time right now. Um, uh, one more thing. Uh, uh, the district attorney was here about a couple of months ago. We talked about that mobile crisis unit uh, that was going to be a project, a pilot project for Upper Darwin, Haverford Township that is up and running as of today. Um, where, where they'll be here this week to introduce themselves to the officers. Uh, they're stationed right now in Upper Darby. Uh, they'll be here part-time and they'll be down in Pilgrim Gardens part-time also. So uh, it's geared for Haverford Township and Upper Darby uh, with the money that uh, Congresswoman Scanlon uh, appropriated for that through the district attorney's office. So we're very happy with that. Um, mental health is a big issue for uh, law enforcement officers uh, for us to handle that. Our officers are trained, uh, but when we have people who are, who are here for, they'll be here two shifts up to the uh, uh, late evening hours uh, to help our officers through that. They won't be dispatched. We will call them. So it's not automatic. So we'll, we'll have contact with them and ask them to respond. So it's, it's a big step forward for mental health. And I've been a champion of that for a number of years because I've seen the issues that the police officers uh, uh, face. So it's, it's, it's another good step uh, for Delaware County. And hopefully uh, when this project is done, uh, we, it'll move forward and, and expand uh, through the rest of the county. All police departments have the same problem, not just us in Upper Darby. So. One last thing, if I could say, I think we, I made a little, a little too light of the uh, catalytic converter issues. Uh, that is a very, very serious problem. We joked a little bit about it. Um, you know, sometimes you get caught up in, in what goes on with the citations, and we kind of wrap that into it. From my standpoint, I want to make it very clear to everybody, catalytic converter thefts are a major problem throughout the region, especially here in Hanford Township, and we're doing everything possible uh, to arrest people who are committing these crimes. Okay? Chief, thank you. You're thank welcome. you for that. And um, I, I, uh, 
Ioka, your sentiments about the crime, about the catalytic converters, as well as the car uh, theft, and um, and your comments about we just we all have to be more careful. Uh, we don't have to paint a dire picture of the world, just to paint a more realistic picture for folks to realize that we've got to um, uh, we've got to be more careful, and we've got to take the steps. Um, that are necessary um, in many circumstances to protect us from crime or at least um, uh, make us less vulnerable targets. Um, and the more we do that, the more neighborhoods get together and do that, the more those neighborhoods will be avoided because they will not be fruitful. Um, and um, uh, what we've learned about the criminal element is, um, um, is as Willie Banks said, we rob banks because that's where the money is. Um, people will go to neighborhoods when cars are unattended and keys are left in them. Um, and people won't go to neighborhoods where people are more vigilant. Um, so I encourage everybody to heed the chief's advice um, and, to, um, and to take this as seriously as they are. Um, so thank you again, chief. Uh, finally, um, next week we will be considering, um, this week we will be considering, and next week we will be voting on um, uh, one last appointment to our boards and commissions, a shade tree appointment. And um, any questions or comments? Yes, Commissioner Trombetta. Mr. President, um, yes. I just was going to say that we are concluding interviews this week, and um, we'll make our decision next week. Great. Um, anything from anybody else? Um, anything else anyone wants to bring before the board? Um, hearing nothing, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved. We are adjourned. <laughs>